Good morning, everyone. Scott from Adrenaline Adventures here. Thanks for watching. I'm with my two sons, Pierce and Griffin, and we're on a remote lake in central Ontario. We're going to be catching some smallmouth bass, and hopefully, if things go right, we're going to be catching some lake trout and some brook trout. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. These adventures are coming up all the time. And if you do like the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Thanks. Cheers. Where the fish at? <laughs> Where the fish at? Can't, Can't catch them, buddy. Well, I can see that I'm going to have to show you guys how to do it. Oh. Oh, oh, that's, that's right. Okay, you guys all set up? Yep. So what we're going to do, guys, work your way along the shoreline yeah. for uh, with the spinning lures for bass. And I'm going to basically do the same shoreline, just further out. Further out. And I'm going to uh, troll for some trout, okay? <laughs> you guys have... You guys got every advantage, okay? Four rods, you're set up for trolling, you're set up for bass. I got I got one rod. Okay. <laughs> give him give him hell, Dickie. <laughs> we recently watched that Tom Hanks movie. What's that called? Greyhound. Greyhound. Yeah, we recently just watched the movie Greyhound with Tom Hanks. Obviously an American-based film on the American story with a little Canadian reference. The, uh, the ship Dickie. Give him hell, Dickie. So as a Canadian family, it's nice to see a little nod to the Canadian partners during the World War II campaign. All right, I'm gonna head out to some deeper water. So I got eight pound XL trilene on some spinning rods for the boys with some MEP spinners on them. And those normally are great for smallmouth bass. And uh, they also have some setups they control for trout with uh, a three-way swivel with basically some weight. And um, then you got a floating rappel off there and you basically just drop it and you kind of hope for the best. You just troll through the, some deep water and hopefully you'll come across the trout. Great for trolling for me. And actually I don't even really have to paddle a whole lot. I'm gonna let the wind blow me uh, where uh, it wants to take me and then I'll just kind of paddle back to get in position. So for the pack bowl for trolling, I have a rod holder. I keep my rod out to the side because um, paddling a kayak paddle kind of limits what you can do with a rod holder, right? So I kind of have it on like a 30 degree angle away from me. Um, I have a nice, it's a long, uh, ugly stick. It's uh, more rod than what I need for these trout, but um, because of the length of it, it keeps everything off in the distance and I can paddle and it's not obstructed that way. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Now this, everyone asked me about the pack boat and how stable it is. And it's, it's stable because my center of gravity is low. If you put a dog in here, like a lot of people ask me about, um, I tried, I'll show you some footage of me trying to get ridge in my pack boat. It, it didn't work very well. Oh, come on, buddy, you're killing me. Oh, man. And Scout, my other Vishla, has gone on lots of trips with me but with a canoe. And she sits really calmly in a canoe. But if you had a medium-sized dog in here, um, or larger, it would be it would be potentially dangerous if you're in uh, some cold water. So I, I wouldn't recommend um, a, you know a dog in a pack boat like this, especially this small. The newer ones are, I believe, a little more stable. They're the Prospector 14. I've seen them. Um, Sean Sean James has one, and I've seen it up close, and it's, uh, it looks a little more stable. And when you get into those boats, they also come in solo canoes, right? So you can um, so if you have a solo canoe, a 14 foot solo canoe, with one of those seat adapters, you can sit in it like a pack boat and then the seat adjusts so you can actually raise it and kind of kneel down and sit in it like a canoe. But you got to keep in mind that when it's up higher, your center of gravity is a bit higher and it really affects the stability of the boat. Like this seems wobbly, but I'm basically sitting at the bottom of the boat and um, it's not, it's for performance. You kneel, you, um, you lean into the paddles and the turns and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty stable. And I'm gonna drop my uh, lure down and see what we can do as I'm getting a little further away here. Ooh. 
Nice. I got something on here. I was just about to say that the fishing's been slow and the boys are trying to catch uh, some bass. And I was hoping to catch some trout. If this is a trout, this feels like a bass though. And I got this on uh, basically kind of a downrigger setup. Let's see what we got here. If it was a trout, it'd be no. Holy cow, it's a trout. Nice. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> nice. I just got the camera out to tell you that um, I wasn't, I was hoping to catch a trout on this trip, but I wasn't really expecting to. And uh, lo and behold, man, do we got a nice lake trout here. Wow, really excited to catch that on this setup here. Uh, he's all hung up, I might have to keep him. There we go, I don't know if you can see that. That is a nice, that's a nice lake trout. Okay, now, so I'm gonna have to get my boys and hook them up and see if we can catch uh, some trout uh, for them, all right? because I've already caught one bass. They haven't caught anything, and they're getting a little frustrated. My boys, uh, they take them on some pretty good fishing trips, so they've caught a lot of fish. Want anybody. We started to paddle toward an island that we thought would be good for bass fishing. As it turned out, it was a colony of cormorants. Our curiosity got the best of us and we went on shore. We discovered young cormorants of all ages. And after taking some quick footage with my telephoto lens, we got back in our boats to leave them alone. So if you watch my channels, you know in the springtime it's easy to catch trout. Caught a lot of trout on my springtime fishing trips. And they're easy to catch because they're up at the top of the surface, right? So you can really just troll um, floating rapalas around the shore, usually 50 to 100 yards off the shoreline on any of the lakes that I travel in, I will catch a brook trout and lake trout. But it's uh, late July and the water's warmer, so the trout are down much deeper. And anybody can catch trout in the spring, but catching them in July is a bit tricky. So what I did was I have a three-way swivel going on here. So basically I have some bell sinkers with a floating rapala, the same one I would pretty much use in the spring, but we need, we're almost setting up like a downrigger system. And uh, the weights are dragging the rapala down and we're letting a lot of line out and we're just trolling really really slowly with it and because that floating rapala is behind those weights it's, we don't have to worry about snagging it's going to be um, you know it's going to be about two or three feet behind the uh, the weights you can't run too long of a leader or you'll never be able to reel in your fish right because we have uh, you know six foot rods here so that's what we got going on and we're going to basically just play around with the depth because trout are all about the water temperature. Trev knows all about stream temps. And it's all about the water temperature in the summertime. So somehow we got to find that sweet spot. You can see how this balsam fir, you can see how it's it's hollow inside, right at the base of it. So it's, um, I'll show you the branches up top, it's, it's obviously dead, we came across it on the island here, but it's uh, completely hollow at the base, so this is gonna come crashing down. Regardless, as you can see up top here, all the branches are dead. And it's gonna be a nice, uh, 
stock of firewood for us. So Pierce is going to finish cutting this down. It's just wobbling now, buddy. Straight down the outer edge. Yeah, that's something. You think left side or right side? Right side, I'm thinking. It wants to go that way, so. A little, oh, there we go. Perfect. See a little uh, pull the axe out? You give her a, it's caught up there, so. Pierce, good job, buddy. Awesome. Good work, <laughs> my man. Proud that was of you. fun. So I'm going to get uh, going on some camp chores around the kitchen, and these guys are going to cut up that firewood, right? Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got a fire going over here and the coals are just going over here. So what we're doing is getting the fire going creating coals, sliding them underneath the grill. And I'm gonna move this around, but this is gonna be a perfect way to cook this trout. The skin's on the bottom, so it's hopefully gonna keep it intact. I had to put my big camera away, we got a little bit of rain. But what I do is I put the plate on top of it and it acts like an oven, so the bottom's cooking faster than the top is, and this reflects the heat back onto the top. So let me show you what I mean by that. The top's getting nice and cooked now. That plate really heats up, so that plate really, really keeps the heat going. Okay, I've been trolling a while, not having any luck. So I'm going to uh, strip some line out here. Uh, let's see. So I'm just going to take this whole three-way swivel thing right off. And I'm going to put a little Clio on. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I've tried to say that five times. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So desperate times call for desperate. Does so desperate times call for desperate. I don't have. See if I can do this out my eyeglasses. Maybe not. Okay, still gonna troll. The little Clio is uh, basically a three quarter ounce piece of metal, so it's gonna have no problem sinking down. And uh, we're gonna try this and see how we do. Because there's a good wind, it doesn't seem like it, but there's a good wind blowing us at a good speed, so don't have to worry about paddling too much to keep it moving. I think my bell sinker might have been a little light for this situation. So I'm going to throw this baby out. Behind him. Let's see off to the side maybe. Got tangled up already. So I should tell you, a blue and silver little Clio spoon worked amazing for uh, Griff and I in Wabakimi. By the time we got back from our trip, all the blue paint was completely stripped from all the pike and uh, walleye teeth uh, scraping it off. And uh, I also caught a huge lake trout last year in Burnt Root with little Clio as well. So it's uh, been a very successful lure for me. And now that I got a little speed and the tension's up, so now the, the spoon's fluttering and I'm going to let a little bit of line out. 
can feel the action on it. It's a good size spoon. A little more line. Try to get it down deep. Try that. So I got quite a bit of line out. Some tension on it. You can feel it working. You can see it working. S'mores. <laughs> yeah, it was just hard to bite, but we need these one of those indestructible glasses. Wow, is the water needs to like keep the mosquitoes on Good morning, everyone. We're supposed to have sunny uh, weather, 28 degrees Celsius. Pretty cold this morning. Wind's blowing in, so hopefully it's blowing out all this cloud cover in cold weather, and hopefully uh, we'll have some sunshine later on. But this is definitely feeling like a pancake sausage morning. So this is the one uh, we got oatmeal for most of our breakfasts, but today we're going to uh, sit by the fire and have a nice, uh, hearty breakfast. <laughs> all right. And the best thing to warm you guys up is cutting firewood, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, this is one of the first trips I've gone on where we don't have any portages to do, so we were able to take some luxuries. A nice heavy griddle, Chris is cooking some sausages over the fire, Griff is just cutting up some firewood, and uh, we're going to have some sausage and blueberry pancakes and some coffee. We've got a nice big percolator here, stuff that we wouldn't normally take on the trip where we're portaging multiple lakes. We went from our truck, paddled down this big lake, uh, made a couple trips to bring all the gear that we had to bring sort of thing. But uh, the idea was just we'll have a little more of a luxurious, relaxed uh, campsite, concentrate on the fishing and not so much the traveling through uh, portages and different lakes and that sort of thing. And you know what, there's something we said about this too, this is really enjoyable, a lot less stressful. Not that it's a bad stress when you're moving and on the go and packing up, but we have base camp here at a beautiful spot and we can just concentrate on fishing and have a nice breakfast this morning. So I just wanted to tell you that in case you see all this gear is that we weren't uh, portaging with all this stuff. How come you can't cook at home? Who said I can't cook at home? <laughs> oh, it's because I can cook at home. <laughs> yeah, ham sandwiches count? <laughs> yes, they do. Do they? Why can't you video? <laughs> no, I want, I want it to be me. It's all about me. Okay, now the first pancake. Never turns out right because you never know if the griddle's too hot. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm the first one. Right you get it? Uh, Should we tell everybody the pancake theory? Yeah. That's looking like a good You want to make a good pancake the first time you make it? Yeah, that's not how it works. No, that's exactly how it works. I have three kids. I, I call make, them my pancakes. I make good pancakes.
is all in jest, so don't get too carried away here. But the first pancake never turns out right. You don't know if the griddle's too hot. The batter's kind of lumpy still. So Pierce is pancake number one. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to use the cold front excuse because like, the, they literally had a heat wave going on here. Yeah? Yeah, just like at home. And then it's cooled off dramatically. Like, I'm still having fun. Like, yeah. I don't mind just sitting out there catching. Like, um, yeah. You go down like I'm like, you need to get off. For sure, I'm having fun. It's just strange because I've gotten before. Right? Yeah. Ideal pancake, eh? Oh, oh, yeah. The first pancake. Not I bad. Going, I bet he's going know. to college and uh, pancakes doing good things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe successful pancake. You know, with enough work and love <laughs> from its parents, this pancake might be okay eventually. Eventually. Yeah. That's the next prime minister. <laughs> Alright, well. <laughs> You guys got your pl plates ready? Pancake number one? See the second pancake is a little more symmetrical. Just a little more well-rounded. Easy going. Low maintenance. Pretty much just an enjoyable pancake to be around, really. That's fine. <laughs> I don't see the second pancake anywhere, actually. I'm here, and the second pancake is mine. The second? That's kind of how, you know, you can pick favorites. But it's funny, I think the second pancake likes someone else more than you. That's true. That's why she's That's not here. true. The second pancake is not here. The second pancake does not care who created her. <laughs> the second pancake also is not the same thing. Mm -hmm. No, that's the one flaw of the second pancake. <laughs> so, to keep you up to speed with that, at home we generally joke that my daughter, Reese, who's not here and doesn't like anything that I do, is um, our second pancake. Third time around. Yes. Having children is interesting. My daughter and I chat quite a bit, but we spend a lot of time chatting how we have nothing in common. Hmm? <laughs> the second pancake. I give you the second pancake. <laughs> and it's all mine. <laughs> Pancake actually turned out pretty good. Every once in a while. That's what the third kid's missing. Chromosome. Popped right out. Like the biggest blueberry in the dead. Yeah, fire going there. Yeah. Oh, this is good. This is why 
we do it. I think Griffin taught me that one. Oh, yeah? That was a little bit. He did Evan Webster. He's singing that every day. Like, this is how we do it. Hey, we take our nose and shoot. I thought that was like the funniest thing. I, I think I got another one to make you one, too, eh, guys? Yeah, if there's left in Luke, uh, after this one, I can make one. Hey, yeah, uh, that's mine. Uh, no. I didn't make this nice and brown for you. I was cooking hot. Did you put butter on it? Yeah, I did. Just a little bit. See around the front edge there? Yeah. It's going to be burnt later. Right, so we got a front coming in, and the rain's starting to come down, so we're going to probably make our way back in and hunker down for a little bit. I don't think it's going to be too serious, but we'll see. We got two disappointed boys here. We got to catch them a fish. Fish don't exist. It's terrible, isn't it? Minnows exist. You can see balloons. This right here is Lenny. <laughs> He's my boy. Mm -hmm. He's gonna crawl up in your ear. You see Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> Right, right up here. I'm gonna crawl right in this guy's ear. <laughs> it's gonna be so cozy. You'll never know. Okay, well, we got back just before the rain started really coming down. And a uh, really the little weather system just uh, kind of sank down here, and um, there was no wind, and the rain just kept going. A constant, uh, a constant downpour just kept coming down. So. We retreated to our tents and underneath the tarp and had a little snack and I actually had a nice nap, which is kind of nice. So now it's almost quarter to eight and it's time to get out. It's the witching hour. The next hour I get a good feeling I think we're going to reel in some trout. I got a griffin on the board. Pierce has caught one but he wasn't able to land it. So the trout fishing has been um, what I was hoping for. The bass fishing still leads something to desire so tomorrow we're going to have to find a better spot for smallmouth. They're usually pretty easy to catch. And we've even switched up the lures, um, maps, uh, any sort of spinning lures generally work. But um, I don't know, we just can't figure it out this trip so far. Okay, uh, we're just getting into the middle of the lake where the deep water is. And we're getting ready to drop down our fishing lures. And uh, Griff will put his paddle away. And I'll basically just troll us around the middle of the lake. And every once in a while a blind squirrel finds a nut. fishing on a beautiful lake with no one else around. This is about as low stress as you can get for a, for a dad. It's, about, it's getting close to dinner time. So it's getting close to dinner time. And they're out fishing so I know when they get back they're going to be hungry. That's what's going to stop the fishing, right? So I'm going to get the stove going and
So we're getting ready to wrap up our trip here and I always make a pass through the campsite where we were just to make sure that we didn't leave anything behind. And also, if somebody else left something behind, I make a point to pick that up and I have two white garbage bags full of uh, stuff that we've used on this trip that I wasn't comfortable burning or it's not really appropriate to burn. And I'm taking it with us so we can pack it out and I've grabbed some other junk that was left behind here because I look at it this way, if someone shows up to this campsite just as I'm leaving and we pass, we cross paths and they get here and there's garbage left at the campsite, I feel like even though I didn't leave it here, they're going to think that I did and it's a reflection on me as a camper, me as a person. So I don't want anybody to experience that when they show up at a campsite after I've been there. And more importantly, I show my kids that I walk around and pick up the garbage and leave the campsite better than it was when we got here. So that's just really important. And I can't stress that enough for trips and, and teach your kids that. I don't know what it is with this generation, but it seems like there's just trash everywhere on the streets and curbsides and everything else. So one thing I really stress is with my boys and, and my daughter as well, is just, you know, don't be a slob, pick up your stuff. And, you know, it's not asking much to leave a campsite cleaner than it was when you got there. And so this is it, we're packing up. We've had four days of relaxation on a beautiful remote lake in central Ontario. Enjoy spending time with my two sons, Pierce and Griffin. Didn't catch as many fish as we were hoping for, but sometimes that happens. I think when you take uh, kids fishing, they can also be distracted by other things and uh, exploring islands and shores of remote lakes, we'll call it that. But it's been a great time. We've had three nights of just beautiful sitting by a campfire talking. And that's time you just can never get back. It's amazing how quickly they grow. Pierce is 18 now. Griff will be 14. And I remember taking them on their first camping trips. It seems like just yesterday. So this was really nice. And hearing them enjoy themselves. And if you have children, getting them together. Um, my uh, middle daughter, my daughter doesn't uh, like camping so much. But we're a close family. Um, but having my two boys here to go uh, camping with. And just watching them off by themselves, I'd be my pack boat and they'd be in a canoe and I could tell they weren't really doing any serious fishing but there was a lot of laughing going on and as a dad it makes me happy, it makes makes me think I'm doing something right and they're enjoying it and that's that's why I bring them out here and uh, to wake up in the morning and see them grab their oatmeal and walk to the, the rock and sit at the lake and just look at it the way I do because I, I just love being up here, love being around nature like this so Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. More videos like this coming all the time. Cheers. we got another one in the books.